I am reading A Plan Deception by Constance Cumby. This is Chapter 4, Working Out the Plan. Alice Bailey calmly noted the obsession of the occult initiate with the plan. Of it, she said, quote, He no longer identifies himself with form or even with soul, but with the will of divinity and with the eternal plan and purpose. It becomes his plan and purpose. He knows no other. Unquote. Many influential leaders in the New Age movement openly acknowledge their debt to these Bailey Tibetan teachings. Among those making such open identification are Robert Mueller, the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, David Spangler, the former co director of the Findhorn Foundation as well as being a board of directors member of the Kirkridge Center, and Donald Keyes, former World Federalist representative to the United Nations, a founder of SANE, S-A-N-E, and co-founder of Planetary Citizens, along with Norman Cousins and former UN Secretary General Uthant. Sorry, a bee just flew in my ear. Oliver L. Reiser, a now-deceased former professor at the University of Pittsburgh and a signer of the 1933 Humanist Manifesto, did likewise. So did Robert L. Moore, the founder of the Sheraton Hotel chain. It would literally take an encyclopedia to fully discuss the ways the plan, so beloved of the initiates, is being worked out. Obviously, this is not practical, especially in a fluid network such as the New Age movement. Therefore, a sampling of such means will be discussed in this chapter. Chapter. Sorry, guys. Changing the Cultural Matrix. The thrust of the New Age dreams has not been to usurp this or that section or the culture or the world. Instead, their most favored tactic has been what they call cultural integration. David Spangler is a key New Age leader. An article by him appeared in a New Age Digest, the UTNE Reader. In an article with a startling title, The New Age Should Disappear. His definition of disappear was rather cultural integration to make the New Age seem like normal, everyday living and its opponents seem out of sync. Wow, has that happened? I think it has. We're there now. Quote, Through the efforts of many individuals and groups, the New Age is moving towards integration and invisibility. The transformation is taking place not through the bang of an apocalypse, but through the quieter and less dramatic growth of familiarity and an acceptance. Unquote. Spangler may be right for all the wrong reasons. He probably is not familiar with the Daniel prophecies. Yet what Spangler says is remarkably consistent with the way the Bible told us the Antichrist would be ushered in. Quote, and in his estate shall he stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Unquote. Daniel 11:32 One form by which this flattery manifests is a world I'm sorry a widespread societal acceptance of a belief that we too are gods and this is the central theme of the new age movement of the many and varied christian apostasies and of paganism from time immemorial One aspect of the plan was to help mankind recognize its inherent divinity, an obvious flattery. Pause. This is the New Apostolic Reformation as far as Christian apostasies. There might be others, but that is the core of their doctrine, that ye shall be as gods. And that's why it's part of the New Age movement. Coincidental, a few modern writers have approached the thoroughness of now-deceased Cambridge scholar James Webb, 
thoroughly in investigating the occult, he wrote three scholarly but readable books about its influence on modern society. The Occult Underground, The Occult Establishment, and The Harmonious Circle. The last book deals with the Gurdjieffian Alspensky networks. Those particular new, new Age groups ominously call their efforts the work. Webb traced illuminated politics and he found in investigating in an in, in earlier era, just as I found in looking at today's, that there was no shortage of research materials. Just as today, these are demonstrable linkages between the various factions and organizations that some may not consider New Age, but rather cons conservationist in nature. So also did Webb find such to be true of earlier manifestations of occultism. Quote, it should by now be clear that the links between the youth movements, the conservationists, and the supporters of what their opponents call muck and mysticism have been both strong and consistent and that the illuminated search for the organic society has taken place in England as well as abroad. What Webb learned of the organic worldview of the occultists of the earlier part of this century is equal, equally true of the New Age movement and Christian apostasy of today. Pause again. The Converging Apostasy. That's a book by Steve Montgomery that I've been using in a lot of videos because he's showing how all these things are converging together. Unpause. As Marilyn Ferguson puts it, the paradigm of the Aquarian conspiracy sees humankind embedded in nature. Webb, as an Englishman, mainly concerned himself with developments in that country and on the European continent. However, what he found true of Europe is equally true of the developments in the United States today. It is startling to see very similar materials being published and used, such as those popular within our Christian colleges and seminaries today. This was in 1985. One such example is the Calvin College Fellows Erdman Press Books, Earth Keeping. And just as Webb noted, it was not all accidental then. It is probably equally fair to say it is not all accidental now. If one carefully studies the literature currently popular in the New Age movement, unless he has an almost religious belief in coincidence, he will have a strange feeling that history and apostasy is repeating itself. Quote, There would be some truth in representing the folk dancing, race improving elements of the underground and as the pagan idealistic movement, while the supporters of guild socialism and social credit might be called the Christian wing. But there were those like Mashingham and Montag Fordham who contrived to combine both aspects of the illuminated approach. Unquote. Although my detractors in and outside of the church continue to deny any possibility of occult influence in the church, it does exist. It is a vital part of working out the plan and will continue in the culmination of the prophesied apostasy of Second Thessalonians. Double Impact Advertising Psychological conditioning of the masses also was to be a necessary part of imp implementing the plan. It is currently being done very openly. Even the familiar television commercials are no longer exempt. According to the Atlantic Monthly in October 1984, in an article entitled Beyond Demographics, How Madison Avenue Knows Who You Are and What You Want, by James Atlas, the VALS project of SRI, I think that's Stanford Research Institute, has grown rapidly in the past six years. It has gone from a modest in-house project at SRI to a $2 million operation billing each of its 151 clients up to $30,000 a year for access to its data. The author also says that scarcely a week goes by without the unveiling 
of some new Val's inspired program campaign. There are strong New Age theosophical biases among most SRI project members. The project itself reflects those biases. Much of the advertising of these clients is now directed to the inner directed, which the SRI VALS VALS, I don't know what VALS is, sorry, the SRI VALS team claims to be the most rapidly growing segment of the American buying public. Project members include Arnold Mitchell and Dwayne Elgin, who wrote the, ba the Bantam New Age series book, Voluntary Simplicity, based on a paper of theirs to SRI. I encouraged a lifestyle, it encouraged a lifestyle that was outwardly simple and inwardly rich. This book, which omitted few of the biases of the New Age movement, including Buddhism, enjoyed wide circulation in the business community. Based on the support and clients they picked up from the business community, they now use their two million year budget to turn out papers with such weighty and prophetic titles as Values and Lifestyles in Western Europe and The Emergent Paradigm, Changing Patterns of Thought and Belief. From the standpoint of those who wish to promote the values of the New Age as those affiliated with this project admittedly do, this particular strategy constitutes sheer genius. Literally, they get two, two for the price of one. They gain the advertising revenues for their budget, which in turn may be used for ongoing and future New Age projects. This money is doubly attractive to them because it is tax-free, since they are structured as a foundation. They do not have the, vet, the taxes the normal advertising consultants would have to pay. This undoubtedly gives them a substantial edge over their less fortunate commercial competitors. In such a highly favored situation, they not only get a free crack at the public, they are paid to do so. And in orienting the advertising to the inner directeds, i.e. New Agers, they have admirably succeeded at cultural integration. Not coincidentally, those connected with this project are close personal friends of David Spangler. At least one of the project members, Paul Hawken, is a former Findhorn resident. He and other project members wrote the Bantam New Age series book, Seven Possible Tomorrows. Of course, seven. Will Willis Harmon, the policy director of SRI International Lectures with Spangler. Many people have phoned and written me to say maybe they might... They might seem paranoid, but they thought they were seeing New Age themes on television commercials. I could assure them that they were not. They did see them. The New Agers know they are there, and they are justifiably proud of them. It was a substantial fait accompli. Harmon's influence in the New Age movement is virtually unlimited. It has ranged from superintending the Kettering Foundation financed changing images of man study to serving as president of the astronaut Edgar Mitchell founded Institute of Noetic Sciences. That report was heavily relied upon by New Age activist Marilyn Ferguson in the Aquarian Conspiracy. Harmon also substantially influenced the notorious and disturbing Global 2000 report to President Carter. Harmon is also a part of Planetary Citizens' Planetary Initiative, as well as one of its convening organizations, the Limited Membership United States Association for the Club of Rome. Voluntary Simplicity, Who and Why Another aspect to the plan is the introduction of on a mass scale of what the New Agers call voluntary simplicity. A Christianity Today reporter told me I had to be wrong about an allegedly Christian writer I named for using obvious New Age references materials in his work. That reporter said of that person that he was obviously a dedicated Christian because he and his family lived on less than $8,000 a year. I told the reporter that that might impress me 
had all the other evidences not been present and I were not aware of the New Age emphasis on voluntary simplicity. As such, this was perfectly consistent with other evidences of his activism in the movement. Why is there such occult interest in voluntary simplicity? The reasons are many. Mainly it is that occultists believe absence of material objects makes one more open to influences of the spirit. Alice Bailey wrote widely about the practice. The general public is not as likely to be directly exposed to Alice Bailey books, but they are being indirectly exposed to the same concepts via the direct participation of Dwayne Elgin in these advertising campaign projects. In his Bantam New Age paperback, Voluntary Simplicity, and the advertisements he inspires for the SRI corporate clientele, therefore we shall consider Elgin's definition of what he terms voluntary simplicity. Dwayne Elgin is not just another hippie. He holds a Master of Business Administration degree from the Wharton Business School as well as a Master's of Arts degree in Economic History from the University of Pennsylvania. He worked for six years at the Stanford Research Institute in California before writing Voluntary Simplicity. Elgin's makes his New Age movement biases clear. He highly recommends Ram Das Be Here Now. Sells for $6.66. As well as Mar Marilyn Ferguson's The Aquarian Conspiracy and John Lovell's The Little Green Book, Shambhala Press. Wow. Lobel has spoken at Lucius Trust. His book is an interesting mixture of home improvement and Hinduism. Other Hindu slash new references include those of Sri Aurobindo, The World of Zen by Nancy Ross, New Age Journal, Co-Evolutionary Quarterly, The Futurist, World Future Society, Mark Statton's Renewal Newsletter, and Marilyn Ferguson's Leading Edge Bulletin. In Ram, in Ram Das' introduction to Elgin's book, he says, What kind of person might assist in the delicate midwifery of revealing to us the nature of the worldly expressions of an integration of inner and outer, east and west? Unquote. Certainly one would be required to have a foot in both the eastern and western perspectives. Ram Das also says it would take people such as E.F. Schumacher. He then goes on to equate Elgin with another now deceased New Age movement thought leader, E.F. Schumacher. Elgin's final picture, Computerized Simplicity. In The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, I wrote, while they promote simple lifestyles, at the same time they call for the interconnection of the entire world by incredibly sophisticated computers with snooping capacities that are Orwellian in scope. Pause. Okay, remember this is 1985, 40 years ago. I think we're seeing this now. They were planning it back before, even before this book was published. Elgin speaks of this very much as does Marilyn Ferguson. Both freely write of the computerized networking process that characterizes the New Age movement and their hope that this will be the ultimate vehicle for the occult I'm sorry, the occultization of society. <clears throat> overall, quote, overall the social change movements tend to be structured so that the larger network is composed of many small voluntarily linked groups, each with its own leadership and all woven together into a network of direct and indirect linkages through the unifying power of shared assumptions. This mode of social organization seems to offer a number of advantages in coping with the problems of social complexity in the context of a faltering political complexity. As the problems of the traditional political economy worsen and the needs for a higher order of social integration and differentiation mount, the new forms of social organization will continue to emerge to pioneer change. Networks of the kind described above seem ideally suited to such pioneering inasmuch as they allow people 
to engage in self-organizing processes to initiate and guide social change toward higher levels of unity and diversity, integration and differentiation." Unquote. These people networks will be greatly assisted in their work by microelectronics and computer revolution that is already diffusing potent new technologies throughout Western industrial countries. At a global level, these networks will be a potent tool for mobilizing grassroots public opinion around critical issues of concern to the entire human family and for promoting global social cohesion through overlapping networks of association that transcend nation-state boundaries. Furthermore, these global networks will begin to nurture a sense of species identity or global social character. The emerging communications technologies coupled with the network form of social organization offer the potential of allowing us to develop a level of social involvement and social cohesion from local to global scale far beyond what was imaginable even a few decades earlier. In summary, there already exist or are fast emerging both the tools of communication and the forms of social organization necessary to sustain a revitalizing civilization. Unquote. Wow. As far more succinct, Marilyn Ferguson expressed the same concepts Elgin struggled with this way. Quote, Global communications have encircled our world beyond any possibility of retreat. Now the whole planet is alive with instantaneous links, networks of people poised for communication and cooperation, unquote. Wow, so see how all this technology and all this stuff is all part of the New Age movement too! The Club of Rome also issued a special report on microcomputers. Pause, that's our cell phones making it clear that they will play a role in the transformation process. To those familiar with the 13th chapter of Revelation and the 12th chapter of Daniel, the above observations should come as little surprise. It is noted that most of these declarations come from those unafraid to promote what the Bible calls sorcery. They also almost universally promote animism and pantheism as environmental saving measures. Therefore, it is a reasonable conclusion that we could indeed well be in the closing days of history. Instead of panic, we must speak the truth to those involved and then lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. Amen, Constance. Seven Possible Tomorrows A glimpse of the messianic expectations of SRI, that Stanford Research Institute, comes through Seven Possible Tomorrows. This book, also a part of the Bantam New Age series, is a result of the collaboration of several influential SRI staff, staff members and sympathetic financial backers. One of its seven possible scenarios, apocalyptic transformation, is a familiar one to those familiar with prophecies of the Antichrist coming in peacefully with the aid of a few. It features a rancher from Wyoming who gives religious talks, ascend, coming forth reluctantly to save the world after a limited nuclear exchange. He then retires back to his Wyoming ranch once he has restored human sanity. Given human nature, it is unlikely that ascend, or indeed anybody else, would surrender such power. But people such as the authors of this book, who believe such a scenario could readily accept such a messianic figure. They might naively and willingly surrender to him the authority the Bible clearly prophesies the beast of Revelation will have. This is still another hidden danger of the New Age rainbow. <sighs> Weren't we just talking about how Trump's going to bring peace? And I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. A plan to combat anticipated opposition. New Age theorists and activists have expected opposition. H.G. Wells was an early popularizer, popularizer of their ideas. His The Open Conspiracy, Blueprints for a World Revolution, 
is highly regarded among New Age insiders. I first learned of it by reading many quotes from it in Marilyn Ferguson's The Aquarian Conspiracy. Wells warned that there would be opposition and that they should be prepared to die for the cause. Okay, I'm quoting now. This is H.G. Wells. Yes, their work does continue and will until the culmination of Armageddon, but it will ultimately fail. The group of inspiring sources, deceiving keys, and the balance of the New Agers are nothing more nor less than seducing spirits, and they are teaching the doctrines of devils, of which Paul so eloquently warned Timothy. May we pray, as Jesus urged Peter to do, that we not be tempted by such schemes. Let us not, as Donald Keyes, David Spangler, and others have, fall prey to the plan. The tragedy is not that there is a plan for world domination. What they fail to recognize is that the plan is for capture instead of their souls. I have heard from people formerly close to Donald Keyes, David Spangler, and other New Age leaders. They tell me, first, that I don't even know the half of it. Secondly, they tell me they are praying for their friends still in the movement. They have obeyed the command to come out of her, my people. Can we do any less? And that is the end of chapter four. Here are the chapter notes. There's a lot of them. And the next chapter is chapter five, holography. Holography in the New World Religion. Isn't that interesting? Okay, thanks for listening. We're watching. Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.